it's my great pleasure to, to, to welcome uh, uh, Tilman Esslinger as the keynote speaker of today's uh, session, okay? So uh, Tilman is very famous, I mean, uh, physicist in our field, okay? So he is a professor of, the quantum optics, of quantum optics at the physics department of ETH, and he graduated and got his PhD from the LMU at, at, at Munich, okay? And uh, Tillman is very well known because he pioneered many, many different fields, okay, uh, connected, of course, to quantum, quantum op op optics and uh, cold atoms. And I would like to highlight, I mean, to me, okay, it's by personal choice, of course, I mean, this uh, superfluid to mod insulator transition. And closer to my uh, uh, workings at the time, I mean, uh, he did some ex beautiful experiment on, on graphene lattice uh, using cold atoms. Another topic that is uh, famous for is this DK phase transition in matter light interactions. And Tillman is a very creative, I mean, scientist. And I guess that today we'll speak about transport, okay? A field of also to, to my heart, I would say, and speak about thermoelectrical effects. And I guess, I mean, quantized uh, conductance. Okay, so please, Tillman, the floor is yours. Before you start again, I will tell you when you reach 30 minutes, Okay, yes, then I will yes. tell you when, when there is five minutes left and then uh, maybe uh, help me and you, you, you end your, your lecture in due time, okay? Thank you. So floor is yours, please. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, very kind introduction. And, um, and it's also a, a pleasure to be here. And uh, what I will talk about was is a, a series of experiments that uh, mostly uh, was done together with uh, Jean Philippe Pontu, who is here in the audience. So I, um, it was really um, a nice series. It was a very enjoyable part of uh, research together with him. Okay, so uh, transport without charge, and let me maybe start uh, with a box here. And uh, a, a gas in a in a container is indeed a rather fundamental system in physics, and uh, has been looked at for a long time. And I, I think with the quantum gases, this gas in a container has come to a an amazingly sophisticated uh, level. I mean, we can change from bosons to fermions, from weak interactions to strong interactions, mixtures, molecules, lattices, rotating. We can look at the at atoms in the container individually. It's amazing what we can do uh, by now. And we had all a lot of uh, fun with that. Um, one can, of course, then wonder, OK, if you have one container, why not uh, uh, taking a second container? Okay, if, if you just have a second container, maybe it does not add so much. Well, it sometimes added a lot. Of course, in their first experiment of Wolfgang Ketterle with the two containers, when he saw that the interference pattern, that, that did add a lot. But once you also put uh, between the containers, a uh, you start to couple them, then you can start uh, to think about uh, functionality. So, so that's kind of the, the simplest system that you can have uh, that starts to have some functionality. And uh, that's also uh, um, the theme of uh, atomtronics, where you know, very many people here in, in the audience are uh, promoting and, and doing uh, fantastic work in that field. Um, so, and then you can also think about, okay, you have uh, particle transport, you can also have um, heat transport. Um, and then you can think, oh, what else could I transport? There's also spin transport. So, so basically, well, we are at a, a, a set of additional parameters so from from the container we made it a bit more in a quantum optics fashion a bit more complicated but not uh, too complicated yet to build it it's not uh, uh, so straightforward um, but uh, to animate it um, there is a nice uh, an, uh, animation Dominic Hussmann uh, has made so what you see here is a uh, microscope. Actually, we have a nice arrangement 
uh, of two microscopes, one from above and one from below, uh, that makes it possible to shape uh, optical potentials uh, nicely. And the starting point is a, a lithium cloud in, a, in the normal um, cigar-shaped form. And then we add some uh, laser beams, and that is shown here in this animation. There's from the side, that's the important one, or the, or the most important one, the first one where we started everything, um, which, which produces a two-dimensional channel, channel between the, uh, between the uh, two reservoirs and produces two reservoirs. And then um, there is another beam, maybe I go back and a bit, let's see, yeah. So, so the first thing was these two, these two channels, uh, this channel. So there's one channel constructed. So that gives you those two reservoirs. And then uh, from above, we can add an additional beam to narrow down the channel to make it, for example, 1D. A lot of uh, experiments were done in this 1D. And then you see there is another beam coming in a second which is, okay, this is the function of this effectively making this potential uh, narrow of, of this green beam. And then there's an additional beam from above, and that's what we call a gate beam. And that beam, uh, with this, we can have, an, it's an attractive potential, and with this, we can uh, shape the depth of the potential in the center of the cloud. And, and there will be quite a bit, uh, I will talk about this uh, gate beam, or this will pop up uh, again. Okay, so so that's uh, uh, what it looks like. Of course, it's a lot of optics, and it's always uh, tricky to keep everything uh, uh, working and aligned. Um, okay, so and then the information we get out of uh, the cloud as as usual. So so we. Um, well, it, it, well, the first part is not as usual. So we we uh, we we shift the whole uh, cloud to the center of the cloud of the magnetic field, such that we have on one side more atoms than on the other side, and then we can block. And then at a certain given time, we can uh, let uh, the system evolve, and then the atoms, as expected, would flow from one side to the other side. And then uh, you take images, and uh, from the images you you extract the number of atoms, the energy, and then via equation of state the the uh, chemical potential, compressibility, and so forth. And um, there there is a, here I, I mentioned two two uh, reviews. One uh, review um, together with Sebastian Griner and Jean Philippe Pontu, and then there is this this roadmap. Uh, a review on on atomtronics, which has recently been um, uh, produced and and covers a lot of the field. Okay, so uh, let me briefly remind you on the uh, quantized conductance, just for those who are not every day thinking about that. There are not so many experiments out there. I'm not sure even whether there is another quantized conductance for cold atoms out, out there for uh, that type of at least of quantized conductance. Uh, so we have this very narrow channel and then the atoms can flow and then uh, one can wonder, okay, how will they flow? And then one will remember, ah, there was this uh, mesoscopic experiment and if you have a very small channel, that's almost like a waveguide. The waveguide will have different modes. And if I have fermions, I might be able to address only one or the other mode or discrete modes. And exactly this type of thinking, uh, uh, that will explain what one observes. If you look at the conductance here on, on in the uh, vertical axis as a function, of uh, the horizontal confinement, so making the confinement uh, of the beam uh, of, of the channel smaller and smaller, then you see uh, steps uh, in the conductance. The conductance is kind of inverse, uh, inverse um, resistivity. 
Okay, and, and very similar to the experiments uh, uh, back then. And uh, the idea is fairly easy. Um, you just take uh, a one-dimensional situation. You have um, a chemical potential on the left, say is higher than on the right. And then you have this 1D one one channel, and then you integrate the, the, the number over the number of right moving states, because here you have only right movers. Uh, and uh, then you get the, the, um, the current, and you see that it's the delta is a chemical potential difference. It's delta over H, uh, well, which is 1 over H. And uh, this is exactly, I mean, this thinking is exactly of the Landau Bittiger uh, Imri theory of um, uh, transport between two reservoirs. Okay, so that is the starting point. Um, and it's a consequence basically out of Heisenberg and Pauli's principle. Those two are the corner of that. Um, okay, but, but what happens then with interaction? That, that was kind of, it, it was one of these a bit more rare moments in cold atoms uh, where you observe something and the theorists are, are puzzled. So what we observed uh, when we went, I mean, it's more, more or less obvious that you would do that with cold atoms, that you go to strong interaction, increasingly strong interactions. And we, when we did that, um, okay, for very, well, for fairly weak interactions, we could see our one over H very nicely, a plateau. And then we increased the interactions. And then uh, we saw that the conductance goes above one over H. I think one is so medium puzzled until it goes to more than uh, two. Um, so the, the usual thinking is, well, um, if you have uh, you, if you have interactions, you will only have as long as you have a Fermi liquid, um, then you would uh, always uh, have still uh, you would simply take your new quasi particles and they would give you a one over h again so so that doesn't uh, make sense and then if you have super uh, uh, if if you have pairs you might have a, a two in in the in a in a bcs type of system yet going here higher and higher uh, that is is a surprise it's on the other hand not as surprising if you go right on uh, unitarity where everything is uh, superconducting, where you would say, okay, um, you, you, you might have a, a, a coupled super, superconductor through the whole uh, through the whole system. So, so there must be some transition between what you expect for two coupled uh, uh, form of coupled superconductors and non-interacting yet it is not uh, i think it's not uh, completely settled what actually is the right way to think uh, of uh, these results uh, there are uh, a few uh, theory uh, papers I, I listed here some early ones i'm i'm pretty sure there are more and i'm i'm um um I, but I have listed, have, have chosen to list those. Um, and uh, uh, they, 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 are, they are along two lines. I, I, one line one can think is that uh, one has in this 2D region, one, or one has some form of pair formation, and that these pairs then um, will take less space uh, than two a uh, single two non-interacting fermions in, in the channel, uh, and thereby you get the larger conductance. So, so you have kind of the pair formation uh, in this region. Um, uh, so so you, you, uh, you have some, uh, again, uh, some uh, non-fermi liquid with some preformed pairs. Uh, uh, that, that's, I think, these two theories along these lines. On another way how one can uh, look at it is uh, that we did in this, uh, in the lowest paper, that is that you say, okay, uh, uh, this is uh, a 1D channel and we have a lower transition temperature 
here in the center. So we will have a little superconductor here in the center. And that superconductor is then uh, coupled uh, to the reservoirs. And now you can see that depending on the size of the superconductor, if it's larger, it might couple to additional modes. So that uh, mechanism is also a possible e explanation that you get higher, uh, uh, higher conductance than uh, one over H. Okay, so, so which one I cannot really tell you. It would be nice to do an experiment which can really uh, nail it down that it's one or, or the other mechanism or a third. A certain me mechanism, but as I said, it's it's uh, it's it's rare in cold atoms that we, we we see something and and actually did not expect. Um, okay, so so here there there is a, the image for the enhanced pairing. But the main part of my talk, I would like uh, to come to uh, thermoelectricity and and mainly also because we we recently did. Uh, some experiments which which gave us more some more insight and showed a bit uh, also more how much you can manipulate uh, in this system the thermoelectric effect. Uh, it reminds me also um, uh, <laughs> of this crew <laughs> uh, with whom we uh, collaborated, and uh, uh, that's a, a picture. Some will see. Some will see where it uh, it it is uh, where we where I took this picture that was in in uh, San Filiu. And uh, so we did it's a collaboration with uh, was with Corinna Collat and Antoine Georges and uh, Charles Grenier. Okay, so what is this uh, thermoelectric effect? As a student, I would have never thought I'd do any work in my life on the thermoelectric effect. I never thought it, it, it's um, really the thing for me. But actually, if you think about it, the thermal effect, thermoelectric effect, if you had it really under good control, that would be the really big thing. <laughs> because, I mean, you're just out of a, a difference in, in a temperature, you can produce a current. I mean, if you can do that efficiently, um, well, all, all the... <laughs> quantum computing and all this hype will diminish if, if you could uh, make devices uh, that can do that efficiently. Um, and uh, But there are some limitations in, in materials and uh, there was a very nice uh, idea put forward and, and summarized in, in um, this paper uh, by Milly Dresselhaus. Um, uh, late Millie Dresselhaus, sadly, uh, she, she died, I think, two, two years uh, ago. Um, and there the idea is that this thermoelectric effect, uh, that one might be able to enhance it uh, by uh, nanostructuring the material, by changing the density of states, by making kind of quantum wells, super lattices, quantum wires. So not only looking at the material, but also at the structuring uh, of the material. And um, well, I, 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 we have for that reason, for many reasons, I mean, Millie Dresla was of course famous for, for being the, 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 the queen of graphene because she did, uh, or, or graphite, graphite or of carbon, of carbon, because she did a lot of work and, and had some links to ETH Zürich. So he, she, she got an honorary doctorate at ETH Zürich. So that's with our rector, uh, Sarah Springman. And uh, at the same evening, uh, there was also an evening uh, together with the physics department. And so I had also my picture shot. So that is uh, myself with uh, Millie Dresselhout at that evening. So that uh, these thoughts that she put down in this um, uh, in this review, uh, that's what we uh, uh, did follow up in our recent work. Uh, but first, what what is this thermoelectric effect? How should I think of it in terms of uh, this cold atom uh, experiment? So what we have here is Again, our um, two microscopes and uh, the, the channel between the reservoirs. And 
uh, now we have a, a beam to stir. Um, so we have, say, same number of atoms on both sides. And then we stir one side and we, we can heat it up a bit. And then we can look at the response uh, of the system. And uh, that that's uh, from, from that paper back then. Uh, what we see then is, well, one uh, reservoir is hotter. <laughs> and the other colder, but they equilibrate in temperature, which is uh, uh, we can expect. And then what we also see is that the temperature uh, and the, the, the particle number uh, shoots up and then goes down again. And that's exactly this uh, uh, thermoelectric effect. So uh, where we can make a, a heat engine. In a very simple terms, you can look at it uh, in this way. Okay, so, so you have a, a, a hot reservoir and a cold reservoir, one say with three atoms and the other also with three atoms because we had the same atom number, but just a difference in, in, uh, in temperature. And then you have some transmission channel that will later play a bit a, a role. What is, uh, um, how, how many, what is the density of states over these channels or so how many, uh, channels do you have uh, per energy and here for this case okay what you will see um okay for this lowest channels uh, for lowest energy states when when you open up and they are coupled okay as many particles will flow to the right as to the left then for the next one well there is one more to the left than to the right the next one it's equal and uh, here it goes with, uh, to the right again. So you might think, ah, okay, that balances, but that's not quite right because uh, this has a higher energy. So there will first be a response uh, to the right, even though the chemical potential is lower on the left. So that's a um, um, way how one can think about that. One can also put that uh, a, a bit more, more formally. So usually a particle current, we think of being driven by a chemical potential, which is, is correct. Uh, but uh, usually we do not think so much uh, about the heat current and uh, the entropy, which is uh, driven by a temperature uh, difference. Yet they are not completely independent um, because uh, the, the particle uh, uh, current might also be driven by a temperature difference, as we had seen, that, that gives the Seebeck effect. Or you might have a, a chemical potential difference, which drives a, a heat current, which is uh, the Peltier effect. And you can uh, put that in, in this uh, uh, thermal coefficients. G here is, is what we had earlier that is uh, the conductance and you have also a conductance, a heat conductance and then AC, uh, that is a coupling which, uh, sh which uh, gives you the coupling between heat and particle current. So that is this alpha C or alpha channel, which will again pop up. And now in the experiment that we recently did, um, they, are, they have a now a more precise graph where we structure this channel and the way we structure, which would for, for condensed matter people or for mesoscopic people a structuring, uh, mesoscopic structuring of the channel, uh, that, that is shown uh, uh, here, okay? So that's a top view and it is a, a two-dimensional uh, situation. So we have quite a few channels along this uh, side. And um, we have a, 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 a gate beam and this gate beam, um, we have an attractive one and a repulsive one. So we can now play exactly with the shape uh, of the gate beam and how deep it is. Is it re repulsive? Is it attractive? And then we can compensate it to bring it in a fairly uh, uh, nice uh, shape. That's what these two beams do. And that is shown here in this part of the graph, okay? 
And these are three different possible adjustments. So, so it's three times the same, but with different parameters in the experiment. And this shows you um, the, the fear uh, of E, so, the, so the, 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 the density of, of the, the energy channels. As, um, as a function of energy. And there you can see here on the left, for example, the energies available in the channel, they are fairly high compared to the chemical potential here, okay? So one has to compare this energy to the chemical potentials that are drawn here on the left and the right. So, so the left and the right, they correspond uh, to our reservoirs, okay, and uh, to to my uh, to the chemical potentials of the reservoirs, okay, and that and the the in the channel here, for example, it means only hot particles can pass. Okay, we see already here now. Nah? Um, if only hot particles can pass through the channel, then then there's no way for the cold particles to go to the other side because they have. There is no 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 channel. However, this changes, of course, if I lower uh, um, my my channel energy, and I can lower it quite a bit. And now I can wonder. Ah, okay. If that's very low, then actually my current should flow here from the right uh, to the left because here I have a, a higher uh, chemical potential. And you see here, I have uh, all, all sorts of particles filled up to mu, and here I have many empty states. Whereas here, if those particles want to flow over there, they are all filled states. So you can see that there's a competition and there might be something like a reversal of, of, of this current. And again, the experiment is just we heat up one of the reservoirs, but the heating up means also lowering the chemical potential and in, in increasing, of course, the the the, uh, the distribution, the width of the distribution. Okay, so what will what will happen? Uh, well, what do we see in the experiment? Uh, let us first maybe look at here at the lowest graph here on the right hand side so that's the temperature imbalance so what is happening here well over two seconds the temperature gets equal okay that's fine we accept that and then in the red the red graph here that is the particle imbalance and then there that means the particles are first flowing uh, to the right from the hot to the cold and then over time uh, they will flow back and now, so that was for the situation. Um, that was for the uh, situation where we have a, a very high, a fairly high barrier. And now let's go to the situation of the very low, a fairly low barrier. That's a blue curve. Okay, what do we see there with the temperature? Well, we see a fairly fast decrease of the temperature difference. Um, but uh, the particle number uh, remains the same. Um, so that seems to be a situation where both effects kind of uh, compensate one kind of the chemical potential driving in the one direction and uh, uh, the thermal current uh, driving in the other direction. And theoretically, if you would go even further there with the attractiveness, then you would expect a reversal also for the non interacting current yet in the experiment. Um, there is a limitation since our the, uh, how the potentials are connected through our uh, shaped uh, uh, landscape. Well, um, so here one would say okay no thermal current so we can switch it off and uh, we can switch it on a strong thermoelectric current okay so you may wonder uh, why not strong interactions you you are not the only person wondering why not looking at the thermoelectric effect in a strongly interacting regime or in a superfluid regime 
um, there is this uh, quote, um, uh, Dominic Husman had it in his thesis. I, I, I quite like the quote, so that had inspired us. Well, that we can say now it has inspired. We found it afterwards, of course. Um, and uh, Ginsburg uh, wrote, I've been working in physics for 50 years, but I continue to be surprised by the role of fashion in science research. Uh, we are not surprised about that. Um, attention to or neglect of many problems is difficult uh, to explain. So why do you look at which? Uh, here, sometimes important roles are played by mysterious forces similar to to the forces which dictate fashion. So it got a bit more philosophical, apparently. In any case, I still cannot understand why thermoelectric uh, phenomena in superconductors is neglected. Merely referring to experimental difficulties is not enough. Is it possible that this note will reverse the situation? Okay, so, so let's look now at what, what is happening if you go strong interactions. Um, so I, I guess in it indicates another 10 minutes. Yes, exactly. Okay, that, that, that's good. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so we, we were uh, um, now curious what is happening when you have uh, interactions. Okay, so, so that's uh, what is happening uh, when you have interactions. And in particular for strong attractive interactions uh, for strong uh, attractive potential and the large chemical potential, then you see a, 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 a spike in the current and the current goes in the other direction. So you can re reverse uh, the thermal current. I mean, that you can have thermal currents in both directions, that's known that one can have. But to our knowledge, there are no devices in solid state where you can actually kind of switch from one uh, uh, to the other. And here uh, for this, the uh, strongly interacting, um, uh, we can see uh, that there is a fast uh, chemical potential driven and then, uh, 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 then it relaxes. And in the case um, of, uh, where the, the barrier is fairly high, there you just see a, uh, there you see the normal uh, thermoelectric effect as we had in the other case. So one might, uh, okay, so here you have a reversed uh, thermal current uh, that is the blue curve here, here you see it in particular in the upper graph. And here is a comparison uh, between uh, between the two. Let's look a bit more at, at, uh, at the physics uh, of that. And <laughs> what, is, what, what you are actually manipulating is the thermal power of, of the channel. Thermal power is a coupling between particle and entropy currents. The particle current uh, you can write as being proportional to some constant alpha, but this alpha uh, gets together out of the channel contribution and uh, the reservoir contribution, which have uh, a different, uh, different signs. And uh, you can also look at uh, uh, the heat current and the heat current is given, the, there is a reversible part and that is given by uh, the thermal power of the channel. And uh, there's the irreversible uh, heat, heat current here on the second term. And uh, now in our, uh, in our experiments, we can, can fit our data, the evolution of, of the curves, and we can fit them with two time scales, basically reflecting uh, 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 the transport and, and the heat. Uh, heat transport, the, the, the GT, what the, the time constant of that is. And from that, we can extract um, AC, uh, the thermal power uh, of the channel. And the total, and, and remember the total current is, is then given by alpha minus, uh, alpha equals alpha C minus alpha L. L where alpha r is the reservoir contribution. Okay, and that is now shown here. 
Okay, so uh, this means how should we read this diagram? Um, we have the local chemical potential. So here um, uh, we kind of have a deeper and deeper uh, potential. This blue curve uh, is without interactions. And uh, now here, these curves correspond to the, the fairly hot uh, particles um, where you have a, a, a large uh, a thermal power and the thermal power uh, gets lower and lower uh, with uh, when when the whole particles uh, can uh, pass. So um, for, for this low chemical potential, only hot particles. Um, for, and now let's have, um, lo let's look at what is happening at the, um, if you have strongly interacting system. Then you have a low in entropy, so low entropy, and uh, you have you get increasingly uh, superfluid pairs. So there, there is less uh, spin, um, uh, well, spin fluctuations, uh, less irreversible uh, heat transfer. The, the more you get superfluid, the less. Uh, uh, the, the 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 more the less irreversible part irreversible uh, part you have in your flow, and that is exactly uh, what you see here in this decreasing five minutes in this yes. decreasing uh, in this uh, de decreasing uh, thermal power that you see here. One can also express that in terms of the Lorentz number which is compares the ability uh, of the system to conduct heat and uh, particles. And there it's an important law is the wiedemann franz law, basically, which says, okay, a particle and heat is carried by the same constituents. Um, I, 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 it's, a, it's a Fermi liquid. And uh, from that, you can get this Lorentz number. And now you can compare our results, what we measure uh, with the Lorentz uh, number. And there we see um, that we uh, don't, uh, well, the non-interacting is blue again. There we have larger error bars and they are somewhat above our theoretical uh, expectation, but not completely outraged. So it's systematically fairly difficult for this low currents. However, for the superconductor, um, or when we go into strong interactions, uh, where it can get superconducting in the center, there we have a much uh, larger signal. We can determine it better. And there we see systematically very, very low, low uh, Lorentz numbers, which you would also expect when getting um, an increasingly uh, superconducting. OK. So I'm um, very, very quick now on that you can do that uh, also not in a 2D channel, but in a 1D channel, which is like a super league. And there, there had been a, a theory uh, on that for Bose gas by uh, Strigari and uh, colleagues. And I will just mention one thing. Um, which puzzled us at the time, but then it was uh, we, we started to understand that you get when you have, so the only difference now that we have a very, very thin channel and that you the system evolves into a non-equilibrium uh, steady state. Uh, it, go, it goes into a steady state with a temperature difference. Okay, so these, these are the curves. So, so you, you heat up one, reservoir and then you wait you, you get uh, uh, the particle number you you create a particle number difference and what does the temperature do Oof. it it uh, stays at a difference the two uh, are connected and the particle number difference uh, uh, stays uh, uh, the temperature different stays on for uh, so this is time scale of second four second. So it, it, it's a, a tiny decay, it must be at some point, but it seems that the, the thermal conductance is super low in this 1D channel. So one can look at it in a, in a view graph here 
uh, you, you uh, have uh, a vanishing heat conductance and the particle number uh, flow driven by temperature difference and chemical potential that adds up to zero. So you have particles going back and forth, uh, but almost no heat going through. Okay, so with this, so with that, we, there, there we then also opened up the channel. So, so here you see, uh, this is a curve from before, and then you opened up. And if you open up more, then then you you, and if you structure the channel, then you are the, what I previously told them. Okay, you you can also look at the Lorentz number, and you can measure the Seebeck coefficient. But uh, since we are coming to the end, um, ah, maybe the figure of merit uh, there 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 we we can be very good in in if you translate it into. Uh, what the materials have, uh, you can get very high figure of merits for for these uh, thermoelectric effects. Okay, well, this was my this was uh, the attention we got by Elon Musk, but I don't want to dwell too much on that. Uh, so he he tweeted, but I think he mixed it up with the with this Bitcoin competitor of of it, Ethereum or something. Anyway. Uh, spin conductance I haven't talked about, but never mind. Let's come to your, an end. Your time is up. Yes, exactly. I am um, <laughs> hopeless. <huh? laughs> but I, in the thank you page, I want to, I, I, I definitely. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Tillman, for this uh, very, very nice talk. I'm sure there will be uh, questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I, I have a question in, in the in the chat uh, question and answer uh, yes. in the chat box. Okay, from Andreas Osterlo. Also, uh, so I read. Huh? Question regarding the quantized conductivity. You have interacting cold atoms, and if they don't interact, there is the usual result as you expected. So, if the atoms interact, this interaction could make up many different channels. Atoms in some interacting uh, energy level. Isn't, isn't it that you would just raise the channel you have for the atoms in the experiment? Could this be a way to think? I, 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 okay, so it, it's true that if we have no interactions, we again get the same result as, um, as weakly interacting. And the reason is um, this uh, landau pitical theory there, or that's the way we think about it. Uh, the main point is that once the particle goes uh, into the reservoir, it mustn't come back. So that, that means that at some point it needs to uh, get in, well, there needs to be some non adiabatic coupling to higher transverse modes. Uh, and that way, then it will be take ages until it, uh, it will come back. So the non-coming back, even without interactions, uh, that is uh, satisfied. And that's why even uh, without interactions, uh, uh, this, uh, the, the whole theory uh, uh, works. One can also look at it that there is a certain point in the reservoir where you, you start to be adiabatic and then those particles which have um, uh, only those particles which have enough energy will go into the other res reservoir. The others will be reflected back. I think there had been some by Imri, some theory be done along that line prior to, to, to the experiment thing, but the semiconductor thing is typically a bit different because they cut where they have the entrance. We have a smoother entrance. Hello, how does your system compare to a PN junction in semiconductor physics? It compares very well. Now, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have not. I'm not thinking enough of semiconductor PN junction. I would love to discuss about the coffee and then to, to look at our different uh, 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 views. But <laughs> I must say, I'm not thinking much about semiconductor junctions 
I have to pass on that question. But I'm, when we see each other at some point somewhere, please ask that again. And I'm, I'm happy to, to exchange. OK, I see that uh, Luigi raised his hands. OK, so Luigi, maybe you want to talk to ask your question? Yes, thank you very much for this uh, very nice talk, Ilman. So I have a few questions, but let me ask one. Uh, so I did understand your statement on the Wiedemann plant uh, law. So if you're family with you, as you pointed out, it's constant, right? So it's a uh, increasing in temperature. But in the, uh, if you don't have family with you have deviation, for instance, there are calculations and also, but do you observe the, the, the uh, deviation from a Wiedemann plant yes. uh, law? Yes, so you yes. Observe. Yeah, because we have this low Lawrence number. Yeah, we, we, okay. we have lower than, yes. Yes. Yeah, but are you in the 1D regime or in the or or not? And so we saw it in both in the in in the 1D and in in the 2D. In, okay. In, yeah, in both have, cases. I imagine you have different corrections, right? In 1D and in 2D, different, diff, completely different thing. Um, I I mean the uh, there is always a, a Wiedemann Franz law and compared if we compare it to that then uh, we have we uh, deviate. Okay. Um, there might be yeah I mean and but it is not so surprising in the sense that you get into the direction of a, 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 a superfluid where you would not expect uh, the Wiedemann Franz uh, uh, law to 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 hold. Uh, but we still have, there one can turn it around, we still have, um, uh, we, we still have a, a, a heat transfer, which is then in turn uh, uh, surprising. So when, yeah, it's simply a bit different, the situation or this version, I mean, in, in particular in the 1D channel, this version of a super leak, is a, it's different from the normal helium super leak. That's, yeah. Okay. And I see in the chat, uh, there is a question by Rob, Roberta uh, Citro. Um, uh, do you have dissipation effects, how uh, they influence uh, your, your results? Uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> and, uh, and looking at dissipation uh, effects, that's uh, uh, something we, we want to do. And um, well, we have some dissipation, some atom loss and so on. Uh, but uh, we, we have not yet looked systematically. Okay, Sa Sandro raises his hand. So, Sandro, please, you can unmute yourself and ask your, your question. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I lost the last uh, few slides because the connection was very really unstable. Uh, and this was the slides concern the, the role of uh, both superfluids. Could you uh, summarize the main uh, perspectives for studying this transport phenomena uh, um, um, uh, with both superfluids? Um, I, I think um, one, sh I mean, the, for the fermions, the nice things is that we can go from uh, bosons to fermions. Uh, from fermions to bosons, one can go more and more to the molecular. Um, and uh, I, I, I think, I mean, the, the, the thing is, um, there are many, many open, uh, many, many type of experiments one can still do, uh, but we have one machine and, and, and we have uh, to work on it. And we, of course, we hope a bit, I mean, the, uh, for the fermions, for example, with the 1D channel um, or the super leak, there is uh, the super leak is typically a bosonic helium. We thought, let's look at the other thing, but I, I have no judgment on, on one or the other. I'm, I'm looking forward to experiments and we might also do, of course, in the molecular regime. Okay. Uh, um... I would uh, stop, I mean, the discussion here because we need to, to proceed, okay? So if you have uh, questions to, to Tillman, you can still use the, the question and answer box and we, we can read or we can send to, to him, okay? 
So thank you very much, uh, Tilman. Okay. Yeah, thank you all for, for listening. And I'm so much looking forward to see you all in real life, hopefully soon. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.